Hello and welcome back to Modicon, and thank you for joining the Streamlining Shoppable Experiences with Monica Community Session. My name is Alex Del Canto. I'm Director of Product Marketing at Acquia. I have dedicated the bulk of my career to bringing great customer journey management solutions to market, starting with Neolane and then Adobe back in 2013. And I'm excited to share with you and talk about Modic um, in, within this session, uh, where we'll actually be discussing how brands can leverage Modic to engage consumers, exceed their expectations, and create meaningful shoppable moments to thrive in today's digital first world. We'll walk through the current state of customer journey management to bring some context to the session. Uh, we'll also go through a brief overview of the key elements of Modic to set the stage for those of you who may be less familiar. And finally, we'll end on tips and tricks that you can leverage to support your e-commerce strategy with Modic. So let's jump into the trends. Because today the customer journey is as complex as it's ever been, People jump from one channel to another across devices very often, and also multiple times before actually converting. But we as consumers don't think in channels. Uh, we're thinking in terms of wants and needs, and we will use whichever method makes the most sense uh, for us to achieve our goal in that moment, the path of least resistance, if you will, but not always. In order for us to increase engagement and build loyalty, that will actually pay off both now and in the long term, brands need to understand each and every consumer's journey so well that they can create an experience that feels like one seamless interaction. Even if it's through multiple channels and engaging with different parts of a brand's organization from marketing to service and operations. Yet, most still struggle with siloed engagement channels and also data sets that limit their understanding of their customers and create disjointed experiences. And it's no surprise when you look at the data. As consumers, practically all of us expect brands to deliver personalized, consistent, and meaningful interactions no matter how, when, or where we're engaging. Yet the majority of businesses struggle uh, with implementing a true cross-channel strategy, even today. I mean, this is a concept that has existed for, for many, many years, as you all know. Um, an issue which is really only amplified with the persistent introduction of new, very impactful channels as brands struggle to onboard them both quickly and in an integrated fashion. And the latter of which is more, mo most, more often than not uh, the case as brands struggle with uh, rigid solutions. In fact, today, 73% of consumers are using a variety of channels uh, throughout their shopping journey. Just think of the last time you were looking to buy something. Chances are that you were acting on an impulse. You looked an item up perhaps on your phone uh, I know out of every single time that I've tried to buy something, I often get distracted. Um, I'm doing something else. And then perhaps I, you follow up on that impulse uh, on your laptop a few days later when it comes back to mind. Maybe you got an email reminding you about it. And that's just the simplest of scenarios. Brands need a way to centrally activate the right data at the right time in any combination of channels, improving the way brands can actually engage their consumers to create those seamless personalized journeys that will keep your consumers coming back again and again. And doing so is really critical because it not only can differentiate the experience that you provide your customers with, but how your customers will actually spend their money with you, right? And they'll spend a lot more money, 140% more on average compared to those who don't have great experiences. So when we think of the customer journey at 30,000 feet, we can already start to see the intricacies that many brands are struggling with. Consumers are not entirely engaged uh, on a single device, um, but they're also engaging in different channels at different times uh, with different intent or purposes of coming to your site or reading your email. It's critical to drive trust uh, bid and build digital dependability to create meaningful connections across this life cycle by putting individuals in the driver's seat of their own journeys. All of your customers are trying to accomplish a goal but the trends that we highlighted earlier make it difficult for brands to help consumers accomplish this goal quickly and easily. Your brand needs to be dependable. And what's more dependable than consistently providing those consumers with what they need in the experiences that they desire. Today, most brands are doing this, are not that are doing this because they don't have the proper digital experience solutions in place to actually aggregate their data and content to orchestrate this journey. It's, it's very difficult at the end of the day. Which brings us to Modic. 
For context, uh, for those of you who don't know, Acqui acquired Monic last year, and we have a very tight relationship with the open source community. Monic is also the foundation of Acquia Campaign Studio. But more importantly, Monic is an open multi-channel marketing platform that allows brands to align their digital strategies, create, orchestrate, and deliver exceptional customer experiences that drive revenue quickly. No matter what channels are central to a brand strategy, strategy online or offline, native channels or third-party channels, established or new channels, marketers can orchestrate campaigns across all of them and design the entire customer journey from one central place. And every customer journey starts with data. Monic provides a comprehensive, extensible, and easily accessible marketing view of the customer. Monic's customer profile combines zero-party data, personally identifiable information, online and offline insights and behaviors. These data man management capabilities allow users to build tailored, dynamic customer segments to always target the right audience for a campaign directly from the user interface. And all profile attributes can be leveraged for segmentation, and those segments can be saved and shared across your marketing stack. This allows your marketing teams to be very nimble to identify new opportunities, create new segments directly, and engage them without the help of IT. And this is just a visualization of that customer profile. All profile elements can also be used to individually personalize the beautiful content that marketers can create through the drag and drop uh, content builders, such as the email builder, without the need to know HTML. Marketers can start from an out of the box template for, or from scratch. And all aspects of, of your touch points are customizable through the builder's interface, from structure to static content, dynamic content, which can include multiple renditions in an email and personalization elements. Marketers can also use content with HTML directly by scripting individual components of an email or its entirety. And creative assets can be uploaded directly to Monic or accessed via the DAM solution of your choice. Content uh, for a campaign can be proofed and tested by every user and emails with personalization can be templated as well uh, for future use. Monic provides flexible multi-channel orchestration that allows brands to align their digital strategies, create and deliver customer experiences through an intuitive interface. Marketers can test and orchestrate campaigns across all channels, including channels such as email, social, mobile push notifications, uh, web push notifications, really any channel that you need, whether it's again, native to the platform or you need to onboard it um, because it's a channel critical to your programs. Um, to design and execute the entire customer journey, no matter what channels are central to your strategy. Marketers can also respond to what customers are doing in real time and optimize the journey for every individual's preferences, ensuring uh, the delivery of the best experience possible from acquisition to advocacy through cross-channel, multi-touch and multi-wave campaigns. Reporting visualizes campaign and channel KPIs to help users track and measure performance over time in a number of pre-built reports, allowing users to quickly analyze uh, marketing performance across campaigns and channels. Which brings us to our very first tip to leveraging Monic to enhance your commerce efforts. You're likely starting with an established customer base, but there are always needs to grow your reach. Thanks to the rich customer insight Monic brings through the customer profile, Brands can maximize their acquisition strategies. Most traditionally, um, these uh, kinds of strategies are fueled through advertising, right? Uh, things like uh, social advertising, um, advertising on uh, search, um, even doing things like contests. contests. Um, and when you look at your customer base that you've grown within Monic and you've, uh, you know, they've built out the preference centers, they've shared, uh, their, their preferences with your brand, you actually know quite a bit about your customers. At the most basic of levels, you know uh, their email. And of course, while, while your customers are more than just their email, that email is an extremely powerful identifier for many scenarios, right? You can leverage that email to do things like build custom audiences in Facebook, where um, Facebook will actually uh, help you find lookalikes um, of your uh, best customers to target and, and onboard um, in your programs and ultimately acquire them. Um, you can do things like 
leveraging the, the, the traits of your best customers that you've uh, identified within your database um, to go out and work with advertising solutions uh, such as uh, um, uh, DMPs, uh, data management platforms, to actually go out and create additional lookalikes to target, uh, again, on uh, third-party properties. Um, and all of this really helps do one thing. Number one, find customers, new customers that will convert and be good customers for your brand. You're spending some money to acquire them and you want them to convert over the long term. Um, but ultimately it helps you generate and drive a better return on ad spend um, immediately. So it helps you not only grow your customer database, but do it in a much more effective manner. The second part of building your audience is, is really through content, right? And you wanna build mind share and credibility uh, for your brand um, directly as well as through association. So you can uh, do things like create uh, sponsored content, articles, um, social videos and posts, even podcasts are great tools um, where you find commonalities within your customer base um, and specific uh, third party uh, properties, partners, and even influencers um, to help create uh, content and drive demand for your brand and ultimately even um, uh, drive conversion um, through those uh, third-party channels and back to your own digital properties. And finally, you need to build your brand identity and culture. At the end of the day, um, we as consumers are buying into a lifestyle when we're looking at any brand, right? Um, I'm not necessarily buying, you know, let's say a pair of running shoes. I'm looking to uh, connect with the community of runners, for example. Uh, and so you need to look at uh, building out um, your thought leadership, right? Even as a consumer brand, um, you could have a blog, you could have your own podcast. Um, many brands have their own YouTube channels today. And of course, every brand is on social, whether that be uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, or TikTok at the end of the day, um, in an effort to build that community and actually uh, tell their story and share that story across the entire a community of like-minded individuals that are engaging and buying from that brand. Which brings us to our second tip. And I mentioned this before, customers are more than just an email that you've bought on a list, right? You really need to get to know each and every individual and incentivize them to share their preferences. We've gone out, uh, we've generated interest, uh, we've built up a, uh, an identity for our brand um, and you need to be able to actually get to the point where a customer is willing to convert and give you their email to, to actually have you engage them, right? So there needs to be a, a level of trust there with each and every consumer um, for them to actually give up some of that information to your brand. If that trust is in there, um, studies have shown that um, customers simply will not share uh, their information and move on to a, a brand um, that they feel better about. Um, so the central element of all of this is building a good rapport with every single individual that engages. And when we look at Monic, um, there are a number of, of strategies that we can implement um, to do just this. Um, the very, very first of which is if you've ever been to a website, um, you'll, you're likely to encounter a, a sort of pop-up, right? We call these focus items in Monic, um, incentivizing you, whether it's the very first page you're on, that home page, or you've clicked around a bit so that they know that you're interested, um, incentivizing you to actually share your email with them. And that, again, is, is a critical element because without a point of contact, we can't actually engage those customers directly, right? So in its most simplest form, uh, these focus items um, can be used to uh, just collect things, basic information, right, that you need to, to you know, sign up for a newsletter. So that could be an email. Um, you could ask uh, at times for um, a first name. That's a great personalization element um, that you can collect in a very short uh, form built into a focus item. Uh, but oftentimes these days, what we're starting to see is, is actually people use this opportunity to get to know their customers a little bit more from that very, very first touch point. Um, so very basic things, right? Like, you know, select your interests out of the few categories which uh, your brand is operating in. Um, it could even be what type of clothes are you interested in? Um, are you more interested in men's clothing or women's clothing, for example? And all of these things um, help you down the line to better engage and personalize that in individual um, from one very, very simple uh, touch point up front 
that can then also be supplemented with landing pages and forms built again, thermotic, um, allowing people to actually tell you more about themselves, uh, build out a preference center and ultimately their customer profile, which is exactly all that richness that you need um, to, to build a winning and differentiating experience um, for that individual over time. And it also puts a lot of trust um, in the hands uh, of, the, of the consumer by allowing them to manage um, you know, their engagement with your brand um, over time. The second part of this is moving away um, from information that has been explicitly given to, uh, to your brand and leveraging things like webhooks to gain um, first party in, in insight into the customer and understand intent, right? So these are great things uh, and opportunities for your brand, um, like seeing where a, uh, one of your customers has browsed on your site. Um, so something very as simple as uh, you know, going to the uh, shoes page and browsing sneakers um, in customer A scenario and customer B scenario, um, you know, going and looking at, um, at, uh, at suits, right, for, for the simplest of, of, of scenarios. So you have one group of customers that is more casual per se, that's looking at sneakers, um, more interested in footwear, and another group of, of individuals uh, who is uh, more interested in formal or business attire um, and is looking at pants and, and jackets and perhaps shirts at the end of the day. And those are critical insights because when you're building out your marketing program I and mean, looking to personalize it down the road, uh, you want to make sure that the content that you are feeding them is relevant, right? And so you can take that content to onboard to fuel your onboarding strategy um, with, with personalized and relevant recommendations, right? So if we're looking at that footwear example, a more casual example. Uh, that very first uh, proactive touch point, that welcome email, uh, will could include more uh, footwear focused or casual inspired uh, athlete athlete leisure wear, right? More products in that uh, regard. Even a product that a customer might have actually browsed or looked at or clicked on while they visited your site versus the consumer B, um, which could receive a completely different experience all within that one welcome email. Not to mention uh, that email can be supported by fantastic content that your brand is creating again um, to help build that community and also create um, a sense of need or, 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 uh, or uh, wishes, if you will, um, for to drive demand at the end of the day. And again, this is all in the, in, in the spirit of uh, providing trust uh, and transparency with each of your customers. So when customers give you information about themselves, um, you know, they're enabling you to deliver the experiences that they expect. Um, we talked about that preference center um, up front. And, you know, as you personalize the end-to-end -end customer journey um, and consolidate your data and unify it, um, you're empowering your consumers um, to number one, tell you more about themselves over time, but also manage that, right? And that's critical because what you don't want is to provide your customers with an experience that you have understood about them, but they might not have understood that you know about them, right? Um, so one thing is, is leveraging first party data effectively. Another thing is leveraging that first party data to provide an experience that your customers have told you that they actually want from you, right? So that could be something as simple as servicing how a personalization has been made um, or simply enabling them again to manage their customer profile and preferences. And another big part of this again is, is that all of your personalization efforts in Modic um, can be fueled by zero party data. And those are those explicit insights that customers have opted to tell you about themselves. Again, I am a man, I like shoes, I like athlete leisure, more casual wear. I want you to email me um, I want you to email me every so often. These are the types of zero party insights that we as consumers share with brands that within Modic um, can be used to inform your segmentation and personalization strategies, which are critical uh, to creating not only compelling experiences, but experiences that your customers actually want. Uh, which brings us to the final point, which is if you don't deliver an experience that your customers expect, um, you might actually turn them away at the end of the day, right? We don't want to be creepy in how we engage our customers. Um, and each individual has, has different preferences 
and expectations when it comes to our brands. And by putting them at the helm of their own data and allowing them to manage um, their own data and preferences, um, we are, again, building that bridge of trust with them and providing a differentiated experience um, that will keep them coming back again and again to your brand. Because trust at the end of the day is the foundation of every experience. Which brings us to our third uh, and final tip. Um, you need to be able to actually effectively onboard these customers and engage them across um, the, their customer life cycle um, to make sure that not only they're, con they're converting that first time, that they're actually giving you their contact information, building out their customer profile, but ultimately buying a first time and making repeat purchases and perhaps growing their, their cart value over time and ultimately uh, growing their, their lifetime value um, from, a, from a holistic rent-to-end -end approach. Um, and so there's a few elements that go into this. The very first of which is something that we touched on up front um, very briefly, but you need the right content to fuel your, your onboarding and, and lifecycle strategy, right? Um, so the very first element of this is being able to identify the correct mix of, of touch points and the correct cadence as well of those touch points. When you think about the types of campaigns that you could be running um, as from you know, that first moment that you get an email, um, you, know, you could be running welcome campaigns, again, to uh, welcome them to your brand um, and provide them with perhaps an initial offer or guidance uh, or even instill that sense of community with them and connect them to other like-minded individuals. Uh, that's kind of the very first uh, campaign that most brands look to implement. Um, but that is quickly supplemented by other types of campaigns. If you think about it, you have seasonal campaigns. Um, you know, we're in, in the, hol the holiday season now. So with Thanksgiving coming up here in the United States, a great opportunity for brands um, to uh, target more kind of uh, fall or family sense uh, campaigns, as well as Black Friday, of course, which is top of mind for all of us, as well as Cyber Monday. So these are great examples of seasonal campaigns that can change over the throughout the year um, as you reach the summer um, here in the United States. Again, you know, Fourth of July is another uh, period um, through uh, Labor Day and Memorial Day. I mean, all of these are great events where you can tailor your content and adapt it to uh, the context that we're living in um, within a certain time period of the year. Uh, another great example here is um, is actually stock campaigns or in-stock campaigns. So many times uh, you'll go to a website, you'll browse an item, maybe it's out of stock. Um, this is a great uh, example for a one-to-one -one approach um, where you know if that item is out of stock, you can follow up and let people know when that item is back in stock to try to get them to convert. Um, because you know, how can you buy something if it's not there? Uh, and another piece of this is actually, uh, again, almost more seasonal where uh, you might be rotating, right? You might be going through um, your fall winter um, collection uh, and, and, and sw switching over to your spring summer collection. So uh, this is another great example of, um, a, uh, of a, a stock change that can fuel a campaign to drive the right demand. And when you think about it, you know, if you're a sporting goods store, for example, and you're going through those seasonal changes, in the winter, you might be um, servicing uh, skis and snowboards. So there's a, a different level of segmentation that you, you can take here where you're targeting, even within that seasonal campaign, different people based off of their interests, whether they are snowboarders, whether they're skiers, whether they're snowshoers um, at the end of the day to ensure that they're the, the, getting the best possible experience. And that brings us to our, our second point, which is template and leverage dynamic content to individualize those experiences at scale. So what you don't wanna be doing is finding yourself in a scenario where you're building an individual piece of HTML for every single segment that you've identified, um, for every single product that you need to swap out in that email, for every single offer that you need to implement in that email. Because you could have five offers, 10 products, um, and you know, 12 different personas that you're targeting. And it quickly, uh, you know, expands to a point where you're creating tens, if not hundreds of different email variants of the same email at the end of the day. And so what you wanna be able to do is streamline that. And you do that by leveraging dynamic content to automatically apply um, the right piece of content to an email for every single individual within your, 
uh, uh, customer uh, database that you're targeting for that campaign that you've segmented. Um, and this is a fantastic approach. It's a great time saver, but it also means that you're able to actually deliver those personalized experiences um, very, very easily and quickly. Um, and then the third part of this is, is, you know, personalized to always be relevant. Now, of course, content personalization is one, one piece of this, but even at the most simplest of levels, uh, when you look at, you know, leveraging those data points that you have within the customer profile, as simple as first name or last name, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're always talking to the individual um, because your inbox is cluttered, right? And whether that personalization is at the subject line level or within the actual a copy of the email, you want to make sure that your email stands out at every single time, because otherwise it will just get lost in the uh, in the mix. And to that end, um, you also need to be able to personalize, for example, on things like the time of day that you're sending to, right? Sending an email to a specific uh, customer segment. Um, you, might, you can even test things like that over time to ensure um, that you are reaching um, the best open rates possible over time. And this again brings us to another point, which is optimize the experience at every single step, right? So again, you have rich insights within your customer database that can be used to power your segmentation strategy. So if we take that time-based testing um, uh, uh, example that I, I just walked you through in, in trying you know, different times of the day um, to engage different, different uh, parts of your, of your audience, um, maybe they live in different uh, time zones, for example. Um, this is a, just one element of testing, right? Um, as people build out their preference centers and tell you more about them, um, you can start to take those insights to inform, you know, the different, uh, the different um, segments you actually need to create, right? So again, Time zones is one of them. You can take a look at um, preferred channel. Not everybody is likes email. Some people are most more likely to engage with you in an SMS, or maybe they've downloaded your mobile app and a push notification is the optimal channel for that person. But you need to be able to leverage those insights and apply them within your workflows to ensure that you're delivering the best experience through the right channel with the right offer for every single individual. And again, testing is, is a big, big part of this because you need to be able to ensure that the content um, that you're sending, the time at which you're sending it, um, and how you're sending it um, is as, as is the most relevant to each of those individuals. And so the more you test, the more you learn about your customers over time. And ultimately, this will help you map, track, and refine the customer journey for every single individual that engages with your brand. Um, as you look through key KPIs, such as open rates and clicks, over time, you're, you'll actually be able to um, refine those segments. In fact, those segments are, are dynamic as people's preferences change. Um, the, the individuals within that segment adapt automatically within Monic, um, and this allows you to ensure that um, their preferences are reflected um, across the entire experience as they come in in real time. But if you identify something through the reporting that you wanna act upon, you can absolutely do that um, since we have those reports within Modic that are um, available to you out of the box. And then the final point of op optimization every step here is, you know, you have a number of set proactive campaigns that you're doing, but you have a, a number of customers that will always come to your, your site, for example, come to your store, um, click on something, perhaps add something to their cart, or even start filling out a form or watching uh, a piece of content uh, or video, I should say, um, and abandon it halfway through. Uh, maybe they get distracted. We are, we're all working from home these days. You might have children that, uh, you know, need help with their homework. Um, you leave it, uh, you leave that activity, you forget about it, um, and you need a form of uh, or a way to actually bring customers back to your to your site and have them start where they left off. So abandoned carts are a great example of a campaign that you can run. And you can actually tweak, you know, whether you want that campaign to be more or less real time. Not always is it a great opportunity. Again, going back to that, you know, uh, work from home example, if you get distracted and you send me an email um, at, within like two seconds of me abandoning a cart, I might not see that email because when I get to my inbox, it could be two hours later. Um, so you can play, again, test with that uh, timing of the cart abandonment email to ensure that you are uh, maximizing your conversion rates 
Um, and you can even implement that card abandonment into an entire workflow supporting a campaign that you might be running, whether it is a seasonal campaign um, or a welcome campaign or a campaign tied to a specific offer that you're running um, to ensure that the, cons the experience is consistent um, at every step. And if they don't respond to that card abandonment email within the email channel, uh, for example, you can also follow up in different channels, right? And have a, a, a cross-channel approach, uh, perhaps you want to send them an SMS if it's a pressing um, item uh, tied to a flash sale, for example. It's a great, great way to get uh, your customers' attention. Uh, which brings us to um, the second point here, which is experiment with new channels, right? Again, email is not the tell-all channel. It drives a great deal of revenue and for, for brands, and it's the bread and butter of any uh, digital business uh, to engage their, their customers with. But, um, you know, new channels are out there every day, right? Just look at TikTok. Uh, if you look five years back, it wasn't even a thing. Um, and so you want to be able to experiment with new channels, see where your customers are going and engaging uh, with your brands and, and brands similar to yours, um, and ensure that you're able to onboard those channels effectively and coordinate them all through Modic, right? Um, so within Modic, you, you have a set a number of channels that come out of the box, you know, things like those focus items, email, SMS, push notifications, um, even social monitoring. Um, and these are, are great channels that you can use to get started from day one. Um, and if you're just starting with one channel, you might look and set yourself a goal to actually onboard your next channel, right? So oftentimes that's gonna be a mobile channel because that's uh, the second kind of most used channel across the board. Um, but if you are looking to some of those newer, uh, more cutting edge channels, more trending channels, if you will, um, you can always leverage the, the uh, plugins that we have within Monic to integrate um, those new channels. Uh, within your ecosystem, as well as connect Modic to any other uh, key tools that you're using within your ecosystem, whether that be a CRM, for example, another ESP that you might be using, um, or other um, social channels, right? And if they don't exist, well, the beauty of open source is that they can be built. Um, so I can always keep that in mind as you're working through um, your experience uh, creation and management um, which brings us to the conclusion of today's session, um, creating shoppable experiences, all is lies in the foundation of building meaningful relationships with your customers, all right? So you, to deliver the right experience in the right context, you need to foster more demand and nurture sales in order to learn more about your customers over time, right? When you're delivering those experiences that generate more sales that you're nurturing, uh, you, they need to be delivered seamlessly no matter how, where, or when customers are, are engaging with your brands, right? It doesn't matter whether I'm switching between my, my smartwatch or my smartphone, um, dropping it and moving, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to my laptop three hours later, three days later. Um, it's very, very important that you're able to keep that conversation always within the same tone, always within the same voice. And it's also extremely important, again, that the content that you're servicing your, to your customers is meaningful to them. Because at the end of the day, again, you're not looking to simply buy an item. We're looking to buy into um, your brand voice, your brand uh, identity, I mean, connect with a group of like-minded uh, people, right? And, and build that community. Um, so. In doing that, experiences become less transactional and your brand becomes stickier over time, which drives engagement and drives loyalty, helping you grow customer lifetime value for the long term. And that is the ultimate goal for creating shoppable moments um, and implementing Modic in your e commerce strategy um, successfully in the long run. So, uh, build meaningful relationships with each and every one of your customers. And that's exactly what Monic facilitates brands to do. And with that, um, I want to thank you all for joining today's session. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm more than happy to, uh, to connect with you and answer them. Um, thank you so much and have a great rest of Monicon. Thank you.